Hi everybody. Um, today we're going to go ahead and continue using loops and uh, today's project is to create a Google Translator app. Um, let me go ahead and give you guys a little demo. Mine translates from English to Spanish. Since I I know Spanish and I just wanted to make sure it translated correctly, I need to figure out why we have this going on at the end. Don't like it. I'll play around with it to see if I can get the logo back to appear. But uh, let's go ahead and get started with the coding of this project. So today we're going to learn how to make our own sprite. We're deleting uh, the old sprite here. So in this window, we'll click on the... We'll hover over this uh, choose a sprite. Go on the brush. And this will allow you to create your own sprite. And we're creating the Google logo today. So we're going to use this text to add text to it. So let's go ahead. And the book says to do each word individually so that you can color it a separate color. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that started. It takes it as a different object if we do that, if we make each letter individually. So just keep clicking on the screen to create the letters. And you could, uh, you could, um, zoom in if you want to. There's a little zoom in button here. So that way you can actually line them up correctly. Let's put them right here. Okay, I'm gonna finish the logo and then uh, I'll continue with the instructions. Okay, so now we're going to color each of them a, the colors of Google, like their logo. So if you select these, the pointer, it'll allow you to select the letters one by one. And when we go up here on the fill to choose our color. So the first letter is blue. There. When you're happy with the blue, then just click away and click on the next letter. The next letter is red. The next letter is yellow. The G is again blue. And we wanted to match this blue, so I've noticed that when you click here, they have a little eyedropper. And you can go ahead and copy the color of the other letters. Green. And then the E is red. So I wanted to make sure that my colors do match each other, so I use the dropper. So now we have all this together, and we can go ahead and uh, highlight the whole thing. So using the pointer, 
you can go ahead and highlight the whole thing and make your, your logo bigger. Now let me zoom out to the original. I believe that's the original size. So there it is. That's how big I want my logo to be. And then we'll save it. Uh, and I've been told I speak very softly, so I'm going to try to speak louder so that you guys can actually hear me. So that's our logo, and now we're going to go ahead and give some code to our, to our sprite. Let's go back to the code tab. The first thing we do is uh, select the, event, the uh, flag event, so when we click on the flag, the program starts. We're going to add a sensing block that asks. This is where we're going to ask the user to enter their phrase. And here are where the loops, the repeat loop comes in from yesterday. So we're going to use two repeat loops. And inside of them, we're going to change uh, the mosaic. I guess the background of it. Oh, that is what it does. Okay, we're going to change the, uh, I'll show you guys what I mean by the mosaic when we demo it again. You're going to change his looks, switch his looks to There we go We're going to change in mosaic We can change brightness and stuff like that We can play around with that in a little bit Okay, now we go and go ahead and, oh, we need another loop, we need another repeating loop that would allow for these two repeating loops to happen inside of it. And we want that repeating loop to repeat five times, and I'll, I'll show you guys what this logic does right now. Now we're now we're gonna use one of those special extensions they have. And here's the uh, translator. So they actually have a an extension to the Google Translator. So now we're going to uh, do the display play to display the translation we're going to add our special translator here into this if you it needs to go into that bubble that says hello on that purple thing you just need to hover over it like right on top of it and it'll pop it into it and we want it to translate into Spanish well, for me. You guys can choose any language you want. And then in here, we want us to give, us, give us the answer. So we're going to put the answer block in there. And we want it to hold for five seconds. Now let's test it. Let's see what it does. I think my logo is still very little. So I feel like this is too small, my sprite. Let me go ahead and edit the sprite and make it a little bigger. I 
there. Oh, you can see it on the. You can actually see it as you change it over here, and see how big you want it. Oh, there it goes. Okay, now let's try it. There we go. I think I figured out why my uh, my other my demo was not going back to the original logo. I forgot to change this value to negative twenty five to make it go back to to the logo. But uh, let let, you, let me walk you guys through the uh, how this works. So when you at least for this code, there's still some more left, but let me show you just this before we add the final touch. So when you guys click the flag, uh, you see a bubble pop here that says, please enter any phrase in English to see it in translated into Spanish. Now, the mosaic here inside this repeat loop is is what, what you guys see when we hit the uh, enter key. This this is this is the mosaic that's going on for repeating ten ten and then goes back ten to to the original and then it gives us the answer in the language we have requested. Now we want it to repeat forever because we wanted to keep asking the user in case the user wants to enter another phrase. Let's add that functionality now. And a forever loop, it's different than the repeat loop as uh, the repeat loop repeats as many times as you tell it to repeat, but the forever loop repeats forever. It, it will keep going forever. There is a way to get rid of, get out of forever loops, but uh, it should be a topic so for some other time, at least in C++ and Java and stuff, there's ways to get out of them in case you're stuck in a forever loop. And sometimes forever loops are good, but sometimes they're not, depending on what you're working on. In this case, we want it to repeat forever, so it is, a for it is good to have a forever loop. So now let's uh, demo this and see what it does. And as you can see, so so it showed us what we saw before, but now it went back to the start to ask us to enter another phrase. And uh, we can change things around and see how it affects it. So let's see, uh, let's do fish eye. Not sure what that is, but let's see what that does. Okay, that looks different, but then it doesn't know what to do with the final one. Let's see, maybe both of them have to be the same.
nice so just keep up playing around with this program and edit it as you want I would love to see uh, your guys' creations and uh, yeah this is uh, the tutorial the program I decided to work on today hi everybody as I mentioned yesterday uh, at the end of the video that the from the project from yesterday that I didn't like how the dinosaurs moved slowly I was able to fix that uh, turns out I had the three right here in the slide so therefore the dinosaur with the long neck was sliding out slower out of the stage and this value is the one that allows for the sliding out of the the gliding out of the stage I did put a dinosaur 2 with le slow, uh, faster speed and I left a dinosaur 2 with the 1 so this is what happens now So yeah, that, that fixes that. So thank you very much for, for watching. And I uh, hope you guys liked the tutorial for today on the Google Translator.